time we have just a few minutes extra uh, this is of course the Sunday before Thanksgiving you may have something you'd like to publicly thank the Lord for so if you do just raise your hand Jerry will come to you with a mic if you don't want to do it with the mic just <coughs> shout it out uh, <laughs> but it's open to you to say what you are thankful for in this season Okay, here's the deal. If you don't say anything, I'm coming to your house for dinner right after lunch. There we go. Uh, I'm thankful to have my sister Glenda here from Oklahoma, the first time ever she's been here on a holiday. Yes. Welcome, Glenda. Hey, where is Stephen? I know, Stephen, you have something to be thankful for, too. Let me walk over here. Uh, Rosita visiting from Ecuador, and she will be here till Friday, and then she has to go spend a boring week in New York City with her sister. <laughs> It'll be pretty, pretty much a boring time after you've been here for a week to go to New York. Love it. Rosita, welcome. Tomorrow is his birthday. Happy birthday. Tomorrow is his birthday. Okay. Listen, I know un poquito of Spanish, and I taught, uh, I taught him to say this phrase, okay? I taught him the other day at his house. 
Repeat after me. Yo soy. Yo soy. El hombre. El hombre. Que tú quieres. Take a care of. That means, you know what that means? I am the man that you want. <laughs> Love it. We're so happy to have you here today. Thank you, guys. Anybody? I just want to thank everybody that prayed for me through my knee surgery. Thank you so much. Hey, he's well. We're so glad to have you back home. We miss Brother Paul. Anybody else? Something you're thankful for? Yes, sir. Tell us your name. Nay. Nay, what are what's you thankful for? God. Oh, listen at that. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Something you're thankful for? Real quick. Do I see a hand? There we go. I have very much to be thankful for, obviously, but wanted to specifically say how much I appreciate my dad sitting here beside me, his unwavering support and his parental guidance. Yes, even at my age, I'm very appreciative and I feel very blessed. Very, very blessed. Amen. Way to go, Dad. I'm thankful for all the prayers that went up for Butch and that he's doing as good as he is. It was hairy there for a little bit, and I'm thankful that the Lord loved me when I don't deserve it. Amen. Thank you, Miss Eleanor. Butch, we're glad to have you back on the men. I have to tell you all this. I have to confess something. Y'all, sometimes the preacher gets to have some fun in the hospital. Butch is getting ready, you know, to go to surgery and everything, and I thought I'd take my moment and have a little fun with this. I said, Butch, now, if you wake up in your maternity ward, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Anybody else? Something you want to be thankful for? All right, Brother Dave. Hey, oh, got one more. I'm just thankful for my family and the love that we share and thankful for God's blessings on all of us. Amen. Thank you, ma'am, so much. Anybody else before we, I'll move back up there. Oh, there's sweet mama. I'd like to thank God for my salvation, Amen. my church, family, my church, my pastor, and our military. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. And I can't pass this up. I have one more. I'd like to thank God for my peapod. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And you may sing with us, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul.
Father God, as we come to this special time of thanksgiving in our country, uh, we think back on our history of those early times when so many people came seeking religious freedom and took the first opportunity to thank you for blessing them and taking them through the early years. Father, we look on our history and we know that you have blessed this nation continuously and we just thank you for that. And we know as Christians that every season is a season of thanksgiving for us because you continuously provide and bless us in so many ways. And Father, a part of that blessing is the opportunity and privilege of working in your kingdom through our tithes and offerings. We just thank you that you've honored us and given us that privilege. And we ask now that you bless these tithes and offerings in Christ's name. Amen.
again. Thank you, ladies. The other day, uh, I think it was about a week ago, it was a Sunday afternoon, I was walking down the hall, and the, the hall was dark down in the church, that first hall there, by the restrooms, you know, and all of a sudden I hear these angelic voices singing, and I thought, this is it, this is the rapture, I'm going. It was those ladies rehearsing to sing today. Bless you, ladies, thank you so much, that was wonderful. Brothers and sisters, if you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to begin reading with verse 15. While you're turning there, I'd like to ask the Benevolence Committee if you'd stay after church. We've uh, got some business to take care of, and I couldn't think of a better way to do that. So Benevolence Committee, if you would just hang a little bit. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with verse 15, is our scripture passage for today. You know, now just a few days from now, what's going to happen? What's going to happen Thursday? What's going to happen at your house on Thursday, Brother David? Uh, I have no idea. You have no <laughs> idea. Okay. What do you hope happens at your house? On Thursday. Well, we probably have to wait till Friday because of work days. <laughs> okay. You're going to get some food sometime, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Everybody, what's going to happen at your house on Thursday, hopefully? There's going to be some good food, some good fellowship. Are you going to go to somebody else's house? Are you going to go out to eat at a restaurant? Wherever you are, you're going to gather together with family and friends and celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, most of us will probably eat too much, watch football. Sound familiar? Nap. Eat again, watch some more football, nap again. We call that holiday Thanksgiving, and it's the time to count our blessings in this country. Now, let me ask you a question this morning. What are we really supposed to be thankful for? Not only just for our family, our friends, our blessings. It's more Thanksgiving than just a day off, having a good meal, and things like that. We're going to, this morning, we're going to take a few minutes and give credit where credit is due. We're going to get the right perspective of thanksgiving. We're going to remember our most important blessing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Now let me set this up before we read it. Paul is writing this letter, the Apostle Paul, to the church at Corinth. Now let me tell you, you want to talk about a church in trouble? Here's some of the things they've got in their church that they're dealing with. False teachers are trying to come in and tell people, you know, Jesus might not be the only way and things like that. So they're dealing with that. They've got that in the church. They've got sexual immorality in this church. A man is having a relationship with his stepmother, and Paul's writing to tell them how to deal with that. They've got immature Christians in this church who are making very bad decisions in their personal lives, and it's affecting the morale of the church and the faithful witness of the church. Paul is writing these letters to try to encourage them to be faithful to Jesus. Now, you think about Paul. What's he been through? He's been beaten and left on the side of the road for dead. He's been hungry, he's been cold, he's been rejected, he's been persecuted, he's been put in prison, he's been forced to flee towns in order to avoid being killed, literally. He's had to stop preaching and make tents for a while in the, all through his ministry. He was a bivocational minister. He would have to work a little bit making tents, and then he could go preach some more. So he's, he's been through all this stuff, but he's telling these Christians something incredible. He's saying, everything I've been through, I'm thankful for it. All the bad stuff I've had to face, I'm thankful for my blessings, and I'm hoping that some good comes to y'all. He's talking to them from his suffering. Now let's read verse 15, and he, he's talking about this. He says, he's talking about himself here. He said, for all things, in other words, Paul says, everything he's been through are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. What Paul is saying to them, I hope you look at everything I've been through and realize God's grace in your life and that you're thankful. He said, verse 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, you know, I don't call being beat up and left on the side of the road light affliction, do you? For dead? He says, Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, the physical world, are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Wow, what a great passage of Scripture. Let's pray together. Father, we're so thankful this morning, this whole service, is a thanksgiving service of love to you. Thank you for your blessings in each of our lives. Father, thank you for the families you have put us in. 
Thank you for this church family you have put us in. Father, thank you that we can live in this area of the country, in this community. Father, thank you for our guests we have today. Lord, thank you that we have another day to praise and worship you. Father, help us not focus all the year long on our problems, but focus on you and how thankful we are for who you are, what you've done for us, and how you've forgiven us. Father, we are so grateful to you. Father, help us have an attitude of praise and thanksgiving, even in the hard times of life, even when life is not working out like we want it to, we can still be thankful and joyful. Father, you're such a great and merciful and loving God. We pray your blessings. I pray your blessings upon everyone, every family in this church today, every family in this community, every family in this county. Father, bless them this holiday season. Father, we pray for people to be saved during the holidays when they hear about Jesus and how thankful we are for Jesus. Father, we pray you have your will and your way. Lord, let this week be a time of, of rest, relaxation for many of us, Father, but also a time of great thanksgiving for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, brothers and sisters, Paul was thankful for suffering. Are you thankful when things don't go right? in your life. Say, God, thank you that I know even in the bad times you're going to take care of me. Let me just give you a list of some things we can be thankful for this morning. Number one, if you want to be thankful for something this week, this Thursday on Thanksgiving Day, be thankful for God's grace to you and to me. Be thankful for God's grace. God's grace, in other words, God doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us better. Let me tell you a perfect example. I experienced grace this week, Friday, Friday, I was going this past week, Friday morning, I was driving pretty early, just after daylight, over to uh, Brunswick to see somebody in the hospital, and I got to that big bridge, that Sidley Lanier Bridge. Does anybody know what the speed limit on that bridge is? 50. It's 50 miles an hour, right? I'm driving along, and I mean, getting up to the bridge, when I'm coming toward the bridge, past the entrance to Jekyll Island, where Brother David lives, you know, by the way, he says his house is open, I'm just kidding, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so I get up onto the bridge. The speed limit is 50 miles an hour. I, I put my sp uh, cruise control on 50 miles an hour. I mean, cars were blowing by me. 70, 80, it looked like they were doing it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to drive the speed limit. And, man, let me tell you what. I start griping. I'm like, you know, I hope you all get caught. I hope you all get this. I hope you get that. I mean, they're almost running me over, and I'm doing the speed limit. So I get to the top of the bridge, and I start down the other side, and, man, they're just blowing by me, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour. So I'm like, you know, the sun's in everybody's eyes. I'm like, somebody's going to get killed out here. And just as I was about to judge everybody else, getting a good judge, I happened to glance down at my speedometer. I put the cruise control on, but I didn't take my foot off the gas. I'm doing 70. <laughs> that moment, I thought, you know, I've just topped this hill, and I'm starting down the other side of that bridge. I am guilty as everybody else is. If there's a cop there, I'm going to get caught too. Brothers and sisters, do you realize every one of us is guilty before God of something? Some sin in our lives that we are guilty. Aren't you glad when Jesus Christ saves you, you don't have to pay for any of that? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that something to be thankful for? When we go stand before him, he's going to say, Jerry... You blew it in your life. Son, you didn't do what I wanted you to do all the time. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. But I see that you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on in. Love it. That makes me excited knowing that, yes, I fail at life, but I don't have to stay there because of God's wonderful grace. Thank God for his grace this week in your life. Thank God for your salvation if you're saved. Thank God that we can also help others find Jesus Christ. We have time to do that in this world. You know, are others being attracted to Jesus by the way you live your life? Are you a thankful Christian, a grateful Christian? Last week, I got to tell you, sometimes when you're a pastor, things are so exciting. You don't think you can take it anymore. This was wonderful. Last week, we baptized another person, an adult man, Doug Newman. If y'all were here, you know what I'm talking about. You know, I was, I was, that, that's a preacher's dream come true. I would, if I could preach from up there in the water, and we're just putting people under the water every Sunday, I would be thrilled, you know. So anyway, so you get to the end of the service, and everybody's congratulating Doug Newman on being a Christian, 
and then Marcia and I went and stand out by the door like we always do and shaking people's hands this teenager comes up to me and he says to me he goes I've never seen this teenager in my life by the way I, I didn't know who he was I, as far as I can remember I didn't ever meet him he says do you think I could get baptized too and I go well yeah you know so I, I said give me just a minute we got through shaking hands and everything and he says to me uh, I won't tell his name because he's going to come forward at some point and I said are you saved he goes yeah yeah I said you've asked Jesus to be your savior yes well who helped you because I know I hadn't helped him he goes Ryan Albright and I went one of our youth led somebody to Jesus yes yes I, I've been giving Ryan the high five all week. I said, way to go, man. So I'm going to get together with these guys and talk. And I told Ryan, I said, now listen, when it comes time to baptize this young man, you got to be up there with me. you got to help me. Brothers and sisters, thank God for his grace. People are still being saved in Brantley County, Georgia. Thank God it's not over yet. Listen to this. Think about your life and your legacy that you're going to leave. What kind of legacy are you going to leave in Brantley County as a Christian? In the, uh, they were redoing the Washington Monument a few years ago. This was before the earthquake where they had to redo it again. They, they uncovered some stuff on the Washington Monument, and they found some graffiti from the 1800s. Listen at what this piece of graffiti, somebody wrote this while they were working on this building. Here's what, uh, here's what a guy wrote. He was sometime in the 1800s, he wrote this, probably, you know, in the wet cement or something. He says, whoever is a human instrument under God in the saving of one soul erects a better monument to their own memory more enduring than this monument. In other words, that's written in the Washington Monument and it's signed BFB. The initials, BFB. Nobody knows unless it's Big Frank Bullard. I don't know who that is. Okay. Be thankful for God's grace in your life. Embrace the full grace of God. Get everything from God you can, all the forgiveness he has, and enjoy that if you're saved. If you're not saved yet, be saved today. Celebrate your first Thanksgiving as a brand new baby Christian. Wouldn't that be awesome? Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all my sin. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. You do not have to pay for your sins when you have Jesus Christ. Don't you love that this morning? You know, there's a second thing to be thankful for. Verse 16 in the passage we said, it said, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Guess what, everybody? If Jesus is your Savior, be thankful one day you get upgraded to a gated living community. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? When you die, you get to go to an exclusive gated community called heaven. Your home is waiting there. God's best is yet to come. Do you realize God always moves his children to better living conditions? Think about it. He brought Abraham out of the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt to the Holy Land, the land flowing of milk and honey. What in the world do you think he's got for us next? The next part has got to be better than here. All right, teenagers, I got bad news for you. Guys, 10 years from now, all you guys look so good out there with your nice hair, dudes, and everything. 10 years from now, some of you are going to be grayer than I am. Okay? Teenage guys, some of you will be bald-headed in 10 years. Right? In other words, we're all getting older. If you spend all of your life, everybody, worrying about this life, you're going to miss what God has in the next life. We're supposed to be getting ready for the next life. Life. The outside is withering away. You know, Marcia's got one of those mirrors. I hate this mirror she's got in the bathroom. You, ladies know what I'm talking about. There's this mirror with the ring of light. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You plug it in and you turn it on and, and one side is kind of normal and then you flip it over. What's the other side? Like magnify. My face looks like a sponge <laughs> in that mirror. I don't look in that mirror anymore. I mean, a sponge with hair. <laughs> George MacDonald was a famous Scottish preacher and a writer. He died in 1905, but he was talking with his son when he was alive, and the conversation turned to heaven, and his son said, Dad, you know, heaven 
just seems too good to be true. And McDonald, the wise man of God, he said, No, son, heaven is just so good, it has to be true. Isn't that true? God prepares a home for us. Think about this. I just thought about this this week. Jesus said all the time, he said, My kingdom is not of this world. Do you all remember that in the Bible? He would say that all the time. Now, think about that. He was down here a temporary visitor for us. He came to die for us temporarily. Jesus was in the flesh on the earth. Now he's back up with the Father. If he was able to do so much down here, think about it. He raised the sick, healed the sick, raised people from the dead, cast out demons. He died and came back to life, resurrected from the dead. If he could do all of that here, just imagine what he's doing in his kingdom, in heaven, and what he's preparing for those who love him. C.S. Lewis says it this way. He said, if we find ourselves with the desire that nothing in this world can satisfy us, the most probable explanation is that we were actually made for another world, heaven. You can be thankful that if Jesus is your Savior, you upgrade to first class one day. Heaven is our home. Number three. Now, if this one doesn't touch you, you're dead. Okay, you're already dead. I want to tell you. This one will get to all of us. Verse 17, Paul says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Light affliction. You know what I'm thankful for this morning as a Christian? I'm thankful I haven't been persecuted like people in history and people around the world. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful you can come to church this morning and nobody is arresting us and taking us to jail or shooting at us or beheading us like they are? Our brothers and sisters over in Iraq and Syria and other places, people doing this morning in other places in the world just what we're doing. They're doing no more than we're doing. They came to church to worship Jesus, and suicide bombers come in and blow the church up. Aren't you thankful you don't have to live like that? We are blessed. I don't know why God has spared America from religious persecution yet. I don't have an answer for you, but I'm thankful he has. Aren't you? Aren't you thankful you can come to church and be comfortable here this morning? Man, don't take that for granted. There were uh, some archaeologists, this is a true story, they were digging in the remains in Rome, Italy, ancient remains, back a couple thousand years. And they found a picture, they were digging in a schoolyard, an ancient school. They found a picture from around 200 A.D. And it shows a little boy, this picture, some, some of the classmates of this guy drew this. It's a picture of a little boy standing, and he has his hands raised, He's worshiping a figure on a cross. Okay, you got it? So this is from, this is, you know, this is obviously a Christian little boy. He's worshiping a figure on a cross. Well, the figure on the cross has the body of a man and the head of a donkey. Okay? And here's the caption that was under the picture. Now, this is a true picture they found. The caption says, Little Alex Aminos is worshiping his God. And, and then they had another inscription on the picture said, Alex Aminos is faithful to his God. This young man was a Christian. This little boy, Alex Aminos, and he was being mocked by his classmates for worshiping Jesus Christ. They drew that picture to make fun of him. They put Jesus' body with the head of a donkey on the cross. But they were saying, didn't you love what he said? That little boy wasn't ashamed of Jesus. He was faithful, even though his classmates were mocking him. Christians. Be thankful you live in the country. We can worship Jesus and not be persecuted like that. I want to be like little Alex, Alex Aminos. If people are going to persecute me for any reason, let them persecute me for worshiping Jesus, right? Finally this morning, number four. I love this one. Verse 18 of our scripture. Now you think about this. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Be thankful that someone has got your back and you can't even see it going on. Be thankful for the things God has protected you from in your life. We never know what's going on in the spiritual world while we're struggling in something, while we're praying while we're serving God. There's all kind of battles going on in the spiritual world. We never know when, when something hits us and knocks us to our knees, how many angels did God send to minister to us? 
or when someone is coming against us and, and attacking us, how much spiritual warfare is being done on our part. You know, you have Jesus watching your back if you're a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit watching your back if you're a Christian. You have angels. Let me tell you, parents, if somebody messes with your kids, what's going to happen? What are you going to do, wife, if somebody messes with your little kid? Take care of it, right? We're going to solve the problem. We're going to get to the heart of it. There ain't going to be no talk like they have in politics, right? Parents, if somebody messes with your young and we're coming out, right? We're going down on them. What do you think God does when somebody messes with one of us? his children you know i love the book of revelation everybody's heard of the mark of the beast right at the end times the people who reject jesus will receive the mark of the beast whatever that mark is and uh, that's the way of identifying them let me show you another one second corinthians 1 21 uh if you put that up on the screen fb3 i got to say it one time in the sermon that's exciting second corinthians 1 21 now listen to this y'all you know Christians have a mark too? Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who has also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The moment you get saved, you got a seal, a mark. You are sealed for all eternity, protected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anybody have a sealed battery in your car? What does that mean? I know you know about all this. A sealed battery means when it's, up, when it's dead, it's dead. There's no pouring water in or anything like that, right? You've got to take it and get another battery. When you got saved, you were sealed for all eternity. God says, that one's mine. Guess what? The forces of hell can come against you, and you cannot be defeated. You can walk in the power of God if we choose to walk in the power of God. Packaged, protected from all eternity. When you pray as a Christian and you're walking with God, guess what happens in the spiritual realm? Things begin to happen on your behalf. John Patton was a missionary to the New Hebrides Islands. This is a true story. One night, some natives, hostile natives in these islands, this is, you know, years ago, they surrounded his little mission house. They were going to burn him out and kill his family. This guy, this missionary, just like those missionaries we saw at the beginning of the service. Patton and his wife and the kids, all they could do was pray. That's all they had. They're surrounded. When daylight came, all of a sudden they looked out and all of their attackers were gone. All of these people were going to burn them out. A year later, the chief of the tribe was, became a Christian. He was converted. And Patton went to the chief a year later and said, Okay, now that you're a Christian, you came to my little missionary house there y'all were going to burn me out what kept you from killing us the chief said to him in shock he says well who were all those men you had there protecting you and Patton's like what the chief says I was afraid to attack we saw hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords circling your house that's what Christians have you realize that we can't see it but when Jesus is your Savior, you are protected all around by a host of heaven's emissaries, whoever they are, whenever you need it. So be thankful for that. We need to be thankful that God doesn't leave us here alone. You know, we have so much to be thankful for. Brothers and sisters, I don't think we're grateful enough, are we? We don't show our gratitude to the Lord. I'm asking you as your pastor this week to begin to live a life of gratitude to your Savior. Thank you, God, for my blessing. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that we're not being persecuted. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. We have so much to be thankful for right here in Brantley County. This is a great place to live. This is a great place to be a Christian. This is a great place to be a witness. Are you thankful? Are you grateful? Or can we be more? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we are so grateful for Jesus Christ. You sent him on the cross, Lord. He died in my place. He died in our place. Father, we can never say thank you enough for the gift of salvation. We take our Christian salvation so for granted. Lord, you did not have to do that. You could have just left us alone. You could have done like in the days of Noah and wiped us out with a flood, but you didn't. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you for Jesus. 
Father, thank you for your mercy. Every one of us in this room deserves to go to hell because we've sinned against you. But thank you that we don't have to. Father, thank you this morning that we are free to worship you in church this morning. Help us not to be apathetic about our Christian faith. Help us not to be lazy Christians, Lord. Help us to be on fire for you this next year. Father, help us not to be Christians who take you for granted. Oh, I can just come down there. The, Lord, the church will always be there. I can just come back whenever I get ready. Father, help us to be faithful to you, faithful to your church. Father, faithful to serve. Lord, we thank you for our blessing. Father, we pray this morning that everyone in here is saved. Father, we pray that every, I pray that every person in this room will not leave until they know if they died tonight that they would go to heaven because they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, help us to be bold like that young man last week and say, I want to get saved, I want to get baptized because Ryan Albright led me, whoever led it. It doesn't matter who leads us. It's who we, how we find Jesus. Father, help us this morning. We have an opportunity to say thank you this morning. The altar is going to be open. Just because we come to the altar doesn't mean we've done something wrong. We may just be coming up here to say thank you, Lord. Father, we pray your blessings on this service. We pray for decisions to be made for Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. The altar is open. Whatever decision you need to make, please come. I'll be the first at the altar to say thank you, and you can join me. just for a moment we're going to sing another verse real quick and then we'll be dismissed brothers and sisters are you sure if you died tonight you would go to heaven that's a very important question that's the most important question anybody will ever ask you in your life if you're not a hundred percent sure that jesus is your savior please come what a great way to start a week of thanksgiving right letting jesus be your savior you need to make a decision join the church come for baptism anything else we will receive you with open arms this church is here to love you and to serve you. Let's sing another verse. Please come. We got time. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done.
it does us all good to give thanks to the Lord. Doesn't it, doesn't it make you feel good inside to thank the Lord for His blessings? I encourage you this week to be thankful for all of the blessings God has given you uh, and your family. All right, we a uh, couple of announcements, and I know and I'm going to ask Brother David to finish the announcements up. Uh, we are having church service tonight, our normal services. Uh, this Wednesday night, we will not have any activity, so you can be with your families. So the church will be uh, closed. I don't know what a better word. Uh, and Miss Peggy has an announcement. Yes, ma'am. If you can spell poinsettias, I will give you a dollar, okay? All right, anybody that wants to order one, please see Miss Peggy. She'll be right here after church. Uh, Brother David, any other announcements? Uh, a week from tonight uh, is a youth service. Yes. And we won't want to uh, forget that. Everybody be here. It'll be at 6 o'clock. Our youth are taking our evening service. If you've never been to one of our youth services, let me tell you, it is a blessing. Please come. Invite people. This is a good evangelism opportunity. Anything and, our, and our children will be singing next Sunday morning. All right, I think we had in the 70s, it's up there uh, somewhere. 73. I, I'm, I'm, my hair is never going to get shaved. <laughs> if y'all get 150 for four weeks, I'm telling you, I will look like Wyatt Blunt the next <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> I can't look that good. Okay, there's a challenge. All right, any, any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Sandy. Uh, also, anybody, I know sometimes it's intimidating to come down in front of a group of people. If you want to make some kind of decision for God and you didn't want to come down this morning, please see me after church. I'll be happy to help you in any way. And nobody wants to embarrass you in front of a bunch of people, but we, whatever we need to do, we'll be happy to do that. All right, God bless you. Visitors, guests, thank you so much for coming with us today. We are so honored that you're here. We hope you'll come back again. And, and everybody, find someone who's a guest and please love on them and tell them thank you. Anything else? Any other announcements? All right, since I picked on him, Brother Wyatt, would you close us in prayer?